Hi, my name is Samantha McDonough and I'm the Opportunity Now Coordinator for Southwest Nashville. Today's quarantine series is going to be on mental health and mindfulness. And just a disclosure, I'm not a mental health practitioner, um, but I do have some good tips to help boost mental health as well as tips on mindfulness. Um, and I first just wanted to talk about what we're living in and how a lot of people, instead of the living mode, we're entering survival mode. So anxiety has risen, um, there's a lot going on, a lot of uncertainty in the world, and mental health is definitely something to pay attention to, your mental health and making sure that you're doing what you need to take care of yourself during this time. So I have put together a few tips, um, 10 tips, and that's combined from Sarah O'Hara at Oasis Center. She is a mental health counselor, as well as from Mental Health America. They have some mental health tips, and so to make sure you're going through this to keep your mental health in check. The first tip I want to talk about to boost your mental health is structure and routine. So this for me is very important, um, making sure I wake up at the same, around the same time every day or at least get out of bed around the same time every day. I like to work out in the mornings and then make a breakfast, shower, and get my day going. Um, so whatever routine that looks like for you, if it's the beginning of the day or if you're a night owl, the end of the day, just make sure you have some form of structure and routine. Number two is to opt outside. So making sure you are getting outside during all this is very important as long as it's safe to do so. And that can easily mean just going on a balcony or in your backyard or front yard and just spending 10 minutes outside. That fresh air really does help. Tip number three is to move your body. For everyone, that's going to look completely different. That could mean walking up and down the stairs. It could mean doing a yoga video because there's a lot of free yoga on YouTube right now and through different apps. This could mean going on a five mile run or it could be going on a half mile walk. So don't try and push yourself too much. Whatever moving your body means to you is perfectly fine. Um, number four is to stay connected. This means Stay connected with the people in your household or stay connected via Zoom or FaceTime um, with your friends and loved ones. So making sure you're checking in on other people because everyone's um, going through this together. So tip number five is track gratitude. And I actually do this by a two minute journal um, that I had gotten for Christmas. And basically it has different pages in here and it says, I will let go of one thing for the day and then I'm grateful for, and then you write three things you're grateful for, and then what you wanna focus on. Um, and you don't have to have a journal like this. Um, I'm sure you could find this online pretty easily, um, but it you could just do it on a notebook or piece of paper um, and just write three things you're grateful for. For example, you can say the weather, um, for your health, to have access to healthy foods right now. Um, anything that you can think of that you're grateful for is really good to get your mind at ease to start the day. Number six is to spend time with your furry friends. So if you're lucky enough to have an animal at home, definitely spend that extra time with them. Number seven is to give back. So if you are able to give back in any way, meaning donations or volunteer, creating mass, it feels great to do so. Number eight is to change the narrative. There's a lot of negative talk out there and just being that positive person instead of saying I'm stuck at home, you can say I'm safe at home or just trying to keep that positivity is really needed during this time. Number nine is learn something new. And this can be different for everyone from baking to knitting to learning a new language to talking about mindfulness, which I'm going to talk about soon so you can learn how to do mindfulness practices, learning how to jump rope, anything like that. If you can try and learn one new skill during this time, that's great. And number 10 is to go off the grid. So get away from your phone for the day or if a full day is too long for two hours, leave it in a separate room. Um, only try and check news at a designated time during the day. So trying to take that mental break from different screens and news sources is really good. 
And I do want to transition now into talking about mindfulness. This is probably something you've heard many times, but maybe you're not sure what it actually means. But this is just some, some tips about mindfulness and what it actually is. So I'm just going to start off with the definition of mindfulness. First, it's helpful to become familiar with the meaning of mindfulness as well as how it relates to meditation. Mindfulness is a quality of being present and fully engaged with whatever we're doing in the moment free from distraction or judgment and aware of our thoughts and feelings without getting caught up in them. We train in this moment to moment awareness through meditation, allowing us to build the skill of mindfulness so that we can then apply it to everyday life. In teaching the mind to be present, we are teaching ourselves to live more mindfully. In the present, take in a breath, not be holding to reactive thoughts and feelings, which is particularly helpful when faced with challenging circumstances or difficult situations. So mindfulness is really about being present and making sure you're not just going through the motions. A lot of people say stop and smell the roses. That's kind of what mindfulness is all about. Now, when I first tried mindfulness, I did not like it at all. My mind kept wandering and I didn't understand how people could just not think of anything. Um, but I did read a book last year called Search Inside Yourself, um, and it is by Chad Mengtang, who was the jolly good fellow at Google. Google was able to offer this class for their employees. Um, and so a lot of things that I realized I was maybe already doing some mindfulness practices. For example, one that I really liked is just walking mindfully. So paying attention to your surrounding, paying attention to your feet touching the ground. Um, another big thing is breath. So doing inhales and exhales and just trying to think about inhale the good, exhale the bad. So especially during this time, inhaling those positive thoughts, exhaling the things you cannot control. So if you were to take three seconds breathing in the word positivity and exhaling the word uncertainty and just doing that five times takes 30 seconds. Um, something as simple as that, you just practice mindfulness. So there's a lot of good things like that book that was shown and as well as apps like Headspace or Calm and just start with two minutes, three minutes. Um, you can work your way up. I still can really only do 10 minutes max, but it's good to just kind of get in the habit of feeling the feelings that you're currently feeling and then trying to let them go. So making sure you make time to understand all the emotions you're going through and be mindful. And the last thing I want to say on mindfulness is a lot of times when I go into classrooms, I'll do a mindful minute. So literally just putting your timer on your phone to 60 seconds and pausing and trying to not think about anything for that minute or think about the beach or your favorite place or eating your favorite food, just like a really good memory and focus on that for 60 seconds if you're not able to focus on nothing for 60 seconds. Um, so something positive or nothing and I call it the mindful minute and it just helps you reset. So you can do this when you wake up in the morning, um, before you go to bed, before you have a hard test to take or just something to reset yourself. Just having that mindful minute is really helpful. Um, I would do that at Glencliff High School a lot. So shout out to those student ambassadors at Glencliff if anyone is watching this. And it, they actually really ended up enjoying it when we started doing it. Um, so thank you for taking the time to tune in to the quarantine video series. Um, if you need any connections to mental health resources, please reach out because we can connect you to some in the community. And I hope you're able to get something out of this today. Thank you.